Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. So another video in my Appendix 4C series of videos. Um, and this company is Sidev and their ticket code is STV. So this is a company, in fact, that um, has a little special place in my in my brain just because it is actually the first financial video I did. So if you go back and look through my history, you'll see that video I did on Sidev. Much rawer video than the ones I do now. You don't see my face at all. Um, I don't even think I do a presentation. It's just um, going through some of their announcements. So Sidev is a very exciting company. It's in my long-term portfolio. So in my long-term portfolio, I hope to hold those companies as long as possible. So I hope to hold Sidev for 20 years or so. But I think there is a chance also they might be uh, bought out eventually in the long run. And hopefully if they do get bought out, it's at significant high valuations than they are now. So let's have a look at their quarterly cash flow report this year or this month or this quarter actually. So it, it dropped um, in the morning before open. So I did have a good look at this and I was a little bit concerned that the market would take it the wrong way. I was actually quite excited about this uh, quarterly cash flow report. But when you look at the ca receipts from customers, it actually did go backwards from this, this uh, quarter to the previous quarter. And they were burning much more cash. In fact, previous cash flow report in July, they were cash flow positive. This one, they burnt cash to the tune of $6 million. And as I mentioned before, the cash receipts went back. But when I had a look at this, uh, they really were ramping up the product manufacturing and operating costs, which suggests uh, we're going to see cash receipts really grow over the next few quarters. So they're building up uh, inventories, that sort of thing. So exciting times ahead, I think. Side of again, I wasn't sure how the market would take it, and this is just their history of the cash receipts going back since April 2017. You can see for about uh, two and a half years or so, not much was happening, was growing very slowly, but then we just saw a massive explosion in cash receipts over the last year. So it's gone from 766,000 in July 2019 to $5.7 million this quarter, as high as $8.2 million a previous quarter. But I think that's a little bit of a backtracement from previous quarter to this quarter is just a one-off. And there are some clues to suggest that it's definitely a one-off. So these are just some of the numbers they reported and you can just see there they had $9.4 million in sales. So a bit of a difference between sales and cash receipts. So sometimes you can use cash receipts as a proxy for revenue, but in this case, it's not. So there's a, almost a $4 million gap between sales and revenue. And that's just because there's going to be a bit of a timing difference between the, the sales they make and the cash they receive from those sales. So the timing is very critical there. And another clue there is they had $4.6 million of sales in September. So a lot of those sales in September, that cash won't flow on until the current quarter we're in now. So it's probably a clue that the cash receipts this quarter are going to be quite significant. And also in the oil and gas industry, they acquired a business to increase their, their um, presence in that sector. They had $2.1 million of sales in September within that sector. So that was a, seems like right now that was a very good acquisition. They have $5.6 million in cash, $4.2 million in inventory, so nothing, no problem there. And then we saw a good reduction in accounts payable and then an increase in accounts receivable, which suggests, yeah, another reason why we're going to see a bit of a ramp up in um, cash receipts over the next quarter or so. And probably the other thing there I've just added there, they've added Shell Oil as an R&D partner, which, um, you know, it's a fairly significant company, that one. So that's quite exciting as well. So looking at the chart and the share price action on the day of the release of the 4C. So I was a bit nervous because they'd released this before open. I was a bit nervous the uh, market might take it the wrong way or differently than how I was looking at it. But it uh, seems like we're on the same page, the market and me. Uh, it went up 11% and it's still going up today on Thursday the 15th of October. And we can see the chart there. Nothing really happening in the last six months. It's trading between about... 90 and 85 cents and as low as 55 cents. You can see a few weeks ago there was a, that uh, this candlestick right here with this large tail to the downside. Now well, that would have been an extreme, really good buying opportunity around 57, 58 cents. And you can see that's very really bullish with that long tail down here. That's actually a good bullish sign. And in the last few days we've seen really good volatility. One day went up 8%, the next day went down 8%, and then the next day went up 11%, something like that. 
I think I might have those numbers wrong, but um, these sort of companies, you see that sort of volatility from day to day. And I think it's best to just ignore that and just focus on the long term. So I'm in this company for the long term. They can do whatever they want to do. The market can do whatever they want to do on the short term. But I think this company has a big chance to be significantly higher valuation in 10 years or so. So right now it's something like $120 million market cap. I have no doubt this could be a multi-billion dollar market cap within 10 to 15 years. And that's why I'm holding it for the long term. So that's all I have for SideF today. Hope you've enjoyed this video. So I'm excited to hold this, but uh, just because I'm holding doesn't mean you have to buy in. You can you make your own decisions, that sort of thing. This company may not uh, may not suit your risk profile or whatever. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. And if you do need professional advice, I'm not a professional advisor. And if you do need that advice, make sure you seek out a professional. So that's all for today. Well, not today, this video. And I hope you enjoy me for another video I'll do in the future. See ya.